Hey, what's up, Boise State fans? We are back. The Matt Bowser Show is returning for year two. My name is BJ Rains. Joining me for the Matt Bowser Show, which would make sense, is Matt Bowser, uh, former Boise State basketball player, now doing a lot of big things at Bowser Real Estate. Uh, happy to have uh, Bowser Real Estate uh, on board as a sponsor for year two of Bronco Nation News. And as part of that, our uh, weekly Matt Bowser Show, talking Boise State basketball, is back. And uh, we're happy to have Matt Bowser with us uh, for another year. Matt, uh, appreciate you uh, agreeing to keep doing this, man. It was fun last year, and I'm looking forward to uh, following the journey with you yet again this year. Year two, we're back. I can't <laughs> believe it's November and basketball season. I don't know if we'll be able to top last year's run, man, with the 14-game winning streak and winning the conference and, uh, you know, jetting all these games. I mean, it was a heck of a year last year, one that I'll never forget in my entire life. But uh, why not? Let's Let's try to top it, right? Back to back. We're going to be back to back champs. <laughs> had the uh, exhibition game last night. We saw you in the crowd there at uh, Extra Mile. By the way, you had a different vantage point. You're now at the other end. What'd you make of uh, Is that your new spot down there? Or what'd you make of no. the. Uh... No, that was just for last night. So I'll okay. be back where I was. Yep. Good, good. Yeah, every time there was a close call, I was looking down. But uh, you were saving your bullets yesterday for the I regular don't season. I any of the bullets for an yep. exhibition game. And that yep. Mike Lurley, he'll be reffing us at Washington <laughs> State. So I didn't want to. <laughs> Burn any bridges. Hey, uh, 76 to 58. We want to talk a little bit about the game and, and what we saw, but also just, uh, you know, the outlook for this season. Obviously, it starts a week from tonight against uh, a, a good South Dakota State team that won 30 games uh, last year. Um, but uh, just in general, what did you make of what you saw last night against 76 58? The big three that we kind of thought it was going to be, you know, Tyson, Chabuzo, uh, and Marcus Shaver all, you know, were the three and double figures. It seems like this team is going to kind of go how they go but uh overall just you were there what were your thoughts last night yeah it was a lot of what i expected you know there was jitters there was some some sloppiness where the game was too quick and then there was people who had flashes of brilliance and uh we were laughing because tyson reminds me of a guy in europe he's played there for 15 years he's just such a took eight shots he had 19 points um he was just so smooth and just so patient it felt like it was january february for him and then uh seeing Buzo for the first time in New Jersey was awesome. And I think those three, you know, Shaver, Buzo, and Tyson are probably going to be scoring, you know, two-thirds of our baskets this year. Tell us about uh, Chibuzo Ogbo. I know you guys have some NIL deals with him, and you were uh, instrumental in kind of helping uh, get him to Boise State to begin with. Texas Tech transfer, and obviously, uh, you know, uh, a guy that uh, I think – in my opinion, it looks almost too eerily similar to Abu Kijab in terms of going to Oregon, being a four-star guy, just not quite fitting in there, having the role he thought he deserved. He comes and you kind of, you know, unleash him and let him do his thing and play ball, and he's a heck of a player. And we saw last night he's not afraid to let it fly and uh, has a really nice, you know, pretty-looking stroke, uh, especially from the outside. Uh, how, how, what do you think of uh, having Chapuzo Ogbo? I think he's going to be a big part of the team this year. Huge part. I mean, he's a big body. He's a great defender and he is not scared to shoot it. That's what I liked. He missed one. He shot the next one right back to back and he made it. He's got to be a great shooter for us this year. And I think like key jab, he'll develop that vocal leadership role that we need so desperately because we're a quieter team and um, he's going to be a force. It's going to be hard to take him off the court because he's going to impact the game in so many ways, but um, extremely excited to follow him this year and see how he continues to, to grow into that leadership, you know, main player role. Seems like a high character guy too. The times that I've talked to him back from when he committed to now, I mean, we, we spoke to him in the post game press conference, uh, very well-spoken guy. And it seems like he's uh, really eager for, for this opportunity to have a bigger role. Oh, he's an, an incredible person, a, a much better person than basketball player. And I think that's, what's so special about Boise is they're recruiting character first, and you can see it. I mean, it's going to be special to watch him. He's gotten bigger already. Our strength coach has him bigger. I mean, I don't know if the jersey got smaller. Or he got bigger, but I was giving him a hard time saying, you know, what size of jersey is that? You're, you're... <laughs> <laughs> well, you could say that about Tyson. You could say that about Marcus Shaver. Both those guys looked like they've uh, put on some weight in the offseason. And I know you mentioned Tyson. Uh, but we, we talked to Leon a couple weeks ago, and he said he's gone from a good three-point shooter to a great three-point shooter in the offseason. And I know it was only three attempts, and it was one exhibition game, but he goes three for three from downtown last night. Uh, as you said, six of eight from the field. 19 points in, in 27 minutes and, you know, 19 points on eight, sh eight shots, like you said. Uh, you know, he, he kind of came on a little slow last year, took over in that starting lineup right about when the win streak started, ended up, you know, going, you know, uh, Mountain West freshman of the year. 
what is the ceiling? I mean, how, how good can this guy be uh, this year? And, and uh, it seems like he's really, you know, I, I, if he didn't break out last year, you could really say he's going to break out as a, as a star nationally this year. Imagine you're guarding him and he's a four man who's going to shoot 40 plus percent from three. You're going to have to be glued to him, which will open the lanes for the other guys. And then you decide to play smaller ball where Tyson's at the five, which we had 10 minutes of smaller ball yesterday. I think 30 minutes were with the bigs at the center and we went 10 minutes of small ball. Him at the five, I mean, he can take you inside. He can hold his own um, on the block playing defense. And then the, the court is just so spread. And then Najee's running around and it's dynamic. I mean, there's, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. And Tyson, uh, he's he looks a lot better, bigger, stronger, faster than a year ago. Marcus Shaver as well. I mentioned looks like he's put on some weight. And it was kind of a typical Marcus Shaver game. He hit a couple threes. He had a couple of really tough driving layups to the basket. Uh, now that he's running the point, he's going to have the ball in his hands a little more. Uh, it seems like it could be a, a monster year for him as well. Leon Rice said after the game, simply, he's going to be one of the best and when we followed up, do you mean on the team and the program history in the Mountain West, in the country, he just kind of said he's going to be one of the best. I mean, it seems like it's all set up for a big year for Marcus Shaver, too. Bronco fans have to be stoked that Shaver came back. So we are very, very blessed to have him. He has one year left. Um, the thing I love about him, he's so cool, calm, and collected. You don't know if he's made five threes in a row or if he's missed five threes in a row. His body language never changes. He'd be a hell of a poker player. I mean, he's just even kill, so calm on the court. Um, and we're going to need his point guard play because he's a natural scorer, which is great. But um, that assist to turnover ratio is going to be huge. It's going to have to be two to one or better from assist to turnover ratio. Well, I got some other guys I want to talk about. We do have some highlights, and I'll just kind of play in the background as we're as we're continuing to talk here. Uh, but uh, you, you know, last night they got off to the early start, obviously with. Uh, uh, Agbo hitting the three there. But one guy that stood out to me that I wanted to bring up, obviously, was uh, Jace Whiting, man. We're going to get into seeing some of his clips here in a second. But uh, how, how impressive was uh, what you saw from uh, Jace Whiting last night? I was blown away. I mean, I knew he was I knew he was tough and good and high basketball IQ, but he's put on a lot of muscle, too, since he got here. And, I mean, just imagine him in two or three years. I mean, he reminds me of, like, a Pritchard at Oregon or one of the really tough Utah State guards. Um, he's going to be a guy that's going to shoot lights out, not turn the ball over. He can guard too, which, you know, a lot of the Idaho kids, they say can't guard. And I was first team all conference on defense. So I know he has that ceiling where he can be one of the best defenders on the floor, but you can't red shirt him. He's too, I mean, he's too ready. Uh, yeah. And it's going to be fun to watch him. He's going to be, in my opinion, one of the most improved between now or or summer and next year when the season's over. Yeah, I originally thought the plan was to redshirt him, and it may have maybe at a small point, like over the summer. You know, a guy coming off his mission, not yep. sure how much, not sure how much he'll play. I don't know if the coaches ever thought that, but I just assumed incorrectly, obviously, that he, the plan was to maybe redshirt him. But from the day he got here, he apparently did so much to just continue earning playing time uh, and, and push. You know, Marcus Shaver in practice as the backup point guard. That he just looks like one of those pesky guys that uh, you just look at and you see him out there and he's a veteran obviously both his parents uh very you know coaches and he's a coach's kid they have literally an indoor basketball hoop at their house yeah. uh I, I mean uh i mean he just seems like a guy that uh you gotta remember he's already done a mission so he's not exactly an 18 year old freshman here no. he's a little bit older i know he had the turnover there that uh, led to the layup but uh, i was very impressed and uh, i don't know if he'll play a ton but if you get in foul trouble or you need to a couple minutes each half to, to spell a marcus shaver or something i don't think you're going to lose too much with him on the floor no, and I think he'll be focused, too, getting that experience going on the road and being on the team. And, you know, who knows how injuries or foul trouble or any of that's going to play in. And I think he'll be mentally ready. And the great thing is, is you got Marcus at the one or him at the one. You can't leave him. They can shoot lights out. Obviously, Mac shoots lights out. Buzo shoots lights out. So, Jockey, we haven't got to see yet. He shoots the ball well. Tyson, Smith. I mean, everybody on the team can shoot the ball, which is going to keep the floor, the court really spread. And they're not going to be able to pack it in. I just like Buzo there. You see, I mean, he just catches it and shoots it. There's no hesitation. He just lets it fly, man. And he's tall. I mean, he's 6'7". He holds the ball up there. I mean, you're not going to block it. Max Rice was only one for five from the field. He missed here, but uh, Tyson Degenhardt had the nice putback. Uh, six rebounds, four assists, though, for Max. I know he's got a lot of eyes on him, you know, uh, Matt, after last year starting like one for 24 yep. from three or whatever it was. But uh, he was just kind of more facilitating last night. He wasn't, he wasn't that aggressive trying to trying to get his shot. No, I think if he can get six rebounds, four assists, and drive in there and the hockey assist are there, you know, he missed the layup, but he drew three defenders. And 
offensive rebound put back for Tyson because of that. Um, I think he's going to be a lot more than just the shooter this year. He's got to, you know, use that shot to attack the hip, get in, and then create for other guys. And, um, you know, he's not going to turn the ball over, and he's going to be really tough on defense. So There's uh, Burke Smith. Nice to see. He may not play a lot this year. Nice to see him get the uh, – I know well, he was pumped up. He's a big Phillies fan with the World Series going on last <laughs> night. I was trying to give him, you know, signals on the bench there, the score. He was all uh, into the Phillies. But, uh, no, uh, you saw Najee Smith have a nice spin around move there as well and had the uh, – you know, had – uh, a nice pass there to Burke Smith. But Najee Smith, 23 minutes off the bench, eight points. Uh, it looks like to start the year he's your sixth man, and it looks like Najee has improved a lot as well. Yeah, Najee against Oregon was was very dynamic and showed, you know, against the more talented or more athletic teams, he doesn't back down. He's ready to go, and he can impact the game on multiple ways. Um, he's got He's kind of like a Swiss Army knife. He can do a little bit of everything. His shot's not pretty, but it goes in. He gets offensive rebounds. He he pivots well. I mean, one time he was at the free throw line, he took a pivot and scored. I'm like, did he travel? No, he didn't. Yeah. But uh, it's exciting. They're great, high-character guys. You can tell the, key, the team chemistry is light years above where it was last year, you know, and the struggles they went through early in the season. And they're going to be tested on Wednesday because South Dakota State, you know, went to the NCAA tournament. They went 30-5 and five last year. Yeah. And, and, you know, they're going to be – they're going to be pretty – tight knit they go to Ak- they get a home- they get a game before us too they go to ohio akron on monday so they'll already have one real game under their belt yeah which could be good or bad because they have to travel all day tuesday to, to have to play on wednesday and not get a ton of prep time uh in for the game so i, I think leon may have strategically uh, planned it that way but uh uh you know derek's asking about them they did lose their best player for from last year but uh you know they are perennially a, a solid team that uh, i think will be a a good test. Uh, I don't know if they're quite as good as last year, but uh, certainly to bring in a team that, uh, you know, is battle tested, that has some guys that return from a team that won 30 games. I do think that's going to be a tough first game. And, uh, you know, Jordan says he's going to love having a BYU basketball coach retweeting his highlights to her followers all season long. So uh, <laughs> with uh, Mrs. Whiting there taking yeah, over as the uh, BYU yeah. women's coach, she's going to be uh, retweeting Boise State stuff all year. Yep. No, she will. That's great. And yeah, talk about pedigree. I mean, his dad played professional basketball, Trent forever. And I mean, you know how dynamic his sister is. So yeah, uh, I'm glad we got him. I'm very, very excited about the next four years. Yeah. He seems like a, uh, you know, a, a gem and kind of a diamond in the rough type thing. And again, I, I incorrectly didn't think he'd be a major factor this year, but I think that also says a lot about him being ready when he came in in the summer. And he did a lot to uh, show the coaches right away that, uh, no, I'm right. I'm not sitting out of here. I'm ready to play now and I'm going to contribute. And it's uh, that was one of the better stories last night. You kind of flip it over. Uh, you mentioned Sada. Uh, Sada Nanga just uh, really didn't, uh, you know, seven minutes, and, you know, it just seems like he's still a little slow, still trying to catch on and, and go. And you saw every time he had the ball in his hands, he had a couple of dynamic drives to the basket. There was yep. one in the second half where I thought he was just going to throw down this monster tomahawk. I mean, you can you can see the flashes, but oh, yeah. obviously didn't play a ton last night, which kind of shows where he's at in the rotation. Um, it's a big transition from high school to college basketball, and you throw in him being from a different country and all the different language barriers. I mean, I I, I know some folks want him to come in and, and, and average 20 points a game and start right away, but uh, it's a little bit of a process, isn't it? I mean, you look through, just mentally, you look through like Jace Whiting or Sada. Like Jace played at Burley High School and then went on a two-year mission and then jumps in at this level, and he's going against Marcus Shaver, an all-league guy. I mean, imagine the growth curve. Sada, you know, plays on his high school team that has a lot of talented guys, you know, who are Division One guys, but they've never played against this level of operations and systems and all that. Where you got to know the systems. I mean, once you get into league play, they know everything you're running, and that's where you really make adjustments. But he'll come along. I mean, you look at Tyson last year. Give Sada four more weeks, and he's going to have. You're going to be thinking he could be in the NBA. So, so uh, Sada played seven minutes last night. Do you know in the first game of the season against Utah Valley last year how many minutes uh, Tyson Degenhart played? I'm guessing seven. Seven. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm, not to say it's going to be the exact same path. Um, they also didn't run any plays last night. Leon didn't want uh, a single didn't want a single thing on film for South Dakota State or Washington State. So it was literally kind of street balls. Kind of you're setting picks for guys and you're yeah. trying to run a little motion offense, but there really was not a set play. There was one out of bound, a couple out of bounds plays, but no uh, real plays and. Uh, for a guy like Sada, too, maybe it would have been a little easier if he knew the offense and knew the flow and what to do. But uh, uh, you could the, the talent is undeniable. And then there's some fans already ready to, uh, you know, 
call him a bust or whatever because he only played seven minutes. I mean, it's it's a long process. Uh, Derek says Chandler was a top 100 recruit. Took him a few years to marinate. So uh, the future is obviously from UC Sot out there, man. All I could think of in the layup line was this dude looks like a a guy that should be playing at Kentucky. I mean, uh, the dude is just he he, he looked. He looks the part, and uh, as I said, it took Tyson seven, eight games to get going, and as you said, you fast forward three, four weeks, I think the future is still very bright for Sada. Oh, yeah. I mean, you even look at Derek Alston, how Boise State developed him, and obviously Chandler to a number one draft pick. And Sada, I mean, he post up the first half. He's 6'10 against a guard, and he took it in so strong with almost Kevin Durant size and just gets fouled and gets to the line like it was nothing. So, yeah. Uh, the ceiling is very, very high there, and I don't know if we've had a 6'10 guard ever come through the program that I can remember. Yeah, you mentioned Chandler and Derek and all these guys. I would say that uh, I would say that Sada's starting at a higher level than those oh, guys too. Right. So all of a sudden, his ceiling could potentially you know blow past those guys. Uh, we got a couple minutes left here. Someone's asking. Josh wants to know about the outlook for Kobe Young. You know, he got a little bit of time last night. Uh, he was a uh, 10 minutes. We saw him have the tip in where I think his head almost hit the rim. Uh, he's obviously got uh, extreme athleticism, could have been a wide receiver in the Pac-12. Um, but, again, just a redshirt freshman, so still yep. a lot of growth to be had there. But I think as a guy that can uh, play some defense, give you some energy, uh, I, I think there's a – you know, he's not going to play a ton, but I think he's a guy that uh, looks like he could uh, – you, you'd feel okay putting in there. Yeah, you want to speed up the game and you want to go full court and you want one of the best athletes on the floor, that's Kobe Young. I mean, he jumped – you see him in warm-ups. I mean, he's dunking between the legs. He's got athleticism that you rarely see across the country. Um, His ceiling is very, very high. I think physically he's already there and he's going to pick up, you know, the intangibles that's going to really get him to the next level. And he'll he'll definitely get on the court, but he's going to have to earn it. I mean, the guys in front of him are all obviously very, very good. They got a great team and – I'm glad they got a good win yesterday. I looked at Louisville, who lost to a Division II school last night, and that wouldn't be a fun locker room to be in. No. What do you make of the uh, the five position? You obviously lose Miladin Armouche, uh, was just such a solid rebounder, defender, uh, you know, for you. And, and, and you know, last night, I, I know uh, Leon was saying against Oregon, both those guys played a lot better, but only four points combined from Milner. Uh, we only saw seven minutes out of Mosilla. He seemed in a very similar spot. Uh, to be honest, as Sada, where he was just trying to a little, just trying to you know, nervous first game jitters, yeah. trying to get you know he had that maybe a chance for a layup or a, on, on one of them, and, and uh, you know was, was shot it way too hard. Um, I still like his size, um, but uh, the, the combination of Lucas and you know Mo Silla, what do you make out of that? And are they going to be able, you think, to to make up for the loss of uh, what you had last year with uh, Mr. Armouche? Yeah, I think they will. It's going to take a while, you know. And guards are going to put them in good spots, but uh, you know. We'll, well, there'll be 30 to 40 minutes for those guys to share, probably 30 and with some small ball in there. And they're going to be able to have full energy at all times because they're going to be fresh. And I mean, Milner looked a lot more athletic. I mean, the one dunk he had, he's springing a lot more than he has in the past. And Mo, I mean, I've seen him in practice. He'll block shots, alter shots. And, you know, the San Diego State type teams, um, his length and athleticism is really going to help us. It was our first chance. I know they've been gone for a while, but it was our first chance to actually realize, like, okay, there's no ACOT, there's no key jab, there's no Armouche, you know, just staples of this program. When you looked out there and saw the uh, the guys kind of stepping in, whether it be at the center position, we mentioned Ogbo, you know, uh, Najee getting more time. I mean, what, what do you make of kind of the what they added versus what they lost and, and kind of the expectations uh, and, and talent level on the team this year? I like it a lot because Shaver is going to be light years better than he was last year. Same with Max, same with Najee Smith. Tyson is going to be, I mean, incredibly improved from last year. Then you got Buzo to come in, you know, in that kind of ACOT key jab role. And then you got Milner and Mo by committee doing what Maladin did. Um, And then Sada coming in as a, as a, is a huge wild card plus Jace and some of the other guys. And we haven't even talked about Pavle. I mean, he was playing fantastic till he sprained his ankle on Saturday. And I guess final thing, what is kind of just your – a week from tonight we're going to kick it off. You, me, and Travis Hawks will be at the Blue and Orange Store next week to uh, have kind of a se- official kind of season preview show. Uh, but uh, just with what you saw last night, with what you've seen in practice, talking to Coach Rice, uh, what is your excitement level to get this season going? Back-to-back. Back. I mean, that's high expectations, but I think it's back-to-back. Back. And there's never been a Boise State team to go back-to-back. Back. And I don't know the last time a Mountain West team, if ever – has gone back to back regular season and tournament champions. You'll have to look that one up, BJ. But um, that would be a chance to make history. Give us, uh, give us a quick shout out for Boucher Real Estate. What do you got going on, man? How can folks, uh, you know, if they're looking to buy or sell their home, uh, what do you got going for them? 
Yeah, write me on social media, text me, email me, bowsherrealestate.com. I'd love to meet with you if you're considering buying or selling. Um, we're here for you. I got an amazing team of dynamic agents and support, and we roll out the red carpet. No, and no, no, uh, no home is too small, too big, whatever. You'll oh. take anybody and everybody, right? Absolutely. Junkyard dog. Bowsherrealestate.com. Uh, check it out. Uh, please support uh, the sponsors, including that Bowsher, and use him the next time you're looking to buy or sell your next home or tell a friend. We would really appreciate it. Matt, uh, appreciate your time. Go sell some more homes. And uh, next Wednesday, we'll meet you at the Blue and Orange Store with Travis Hawks, and we'll uh, kick the season off right. I'll give me a new Boise State shirt for the game on Wednesday. There you we'll go. There you go. Baby. He's Matt Bowsher. My name is BJ Rains. Thanks for checking out Bronco Nation News, bronconationnews.com. We'll be back tonight, 8 o'clock, be in and after dark with uh, George Iloka, former NFL player, uh, Winston Venable, John Mallory as well. So check that out, 8 o'clock tonight for subscribers. Otherwise, uh, we'll talk to you later. We'll see you next Wednesday, Episode 2 of the Matt Bowsher Show uh, coming up on the day of the season opener. It's here, Boise State basketball a week away, and uh, we'll have you covered all season long on the Matt Bowser Show here at BroncoNationNews.com.